Hi folks, Vegathron here. In today's video, we'll be doing a review for Narita Boy. But before we get to that, I just want to announce we've hit our first goal of 500 subs. Thanks to each and every one of you who have subscribed and continue to support the channel. It really does mean a lot. Now, back to the review. The debut game of Studio Cobra, Narita Boy is an action platformer set inside a retro 80s style digital world. Narita Boy is set in the Digital Kingdom, a virtual world created in an alternate version of the 80s by a computer programmer named Lionel Pearl. The game's plot revolves around stopping a malicious program known simply as Him, who is attempting to seize control of the Digital Kingdom by spreading his corrupt code throughout the world, and in the process has wiped out the creator's memory. The player takes control of Lionel's son, a young unnamed boy who is sucked into the digital kingdom through a game console his father gave him, becoming the reader boy in the process, a character from the game of his father's making. With this newfound power, programs of the digital kingdom task him with restoring the creator's memories and restoring balance to the digital kingdom. The digital kingdom itself is a masterfully crafted world that gives some real Tron vibes. Since you're technically inside a computer, what your character sees is all a metaphor for different areas and functions of the computer system. Programs, for example, are represented as characters, and while most of the metaphor is subtle, some are more obvious, such as places like Floppy Island. This adds an extra layer of depth to the world that really takes it to the next level. However, if you aren't tech savvy, don't worry. Even on a surface level, the world is one of the coolest I've seen and doesn't require computer programming knowledge to enjoy. As for the story, the pacing is well done and always kept me engaged and progressing. It introduced new aspects of the story as I went through without making me feel overloaded with information. Alongside the main plot about saving the digital kingdom, we also are told the story of the creator's life and what led him to create the digital kingdom through finding memories throughout the world. These memories are a nice change of pace to the bright colours and crazy environments of the rest of the game and I found myself looking forward to each new memory I unlocked. Sometimes backstories can feel a little boring and unnecessary, but in this case it gives valuable insight into the game's world as a whole and helped me feel invested in it. I feel as though I could go on about just how good I think the world of Narita Boy is, and there are a few aspects I haven't even gotten into, such as the character design and specific areas, but to avoid a 30 minute video, I'll end this section with saying that the story was engaging and satisfying, and the world and lore is among my favourites of any indie game. Solid 19 out of 20, the story and world building. Gameplay in Narita Boy consists of two main things, fighting enemies and exploring the world to find techno keys. The combat is fairly simple, from all the things you would expect from a title such as this, like the ability to dash, perform power strikes, and heal. Your sword also doubles as a shotgun with three charges which, alternatively, can be used all at once for a powerful and satisfying beam attack. As you progress through the game, more combat abilities will be unlocked. However, I didn't feel these changed how I approach combat as much as I would have liked. The game offers a good amount of unique enemy types, all with their own moves, but sadly this doesn't fix the core combat, it just feels like it's missing something. Another layer to the combat system is the ability to channel a certain colour. This will cause you to deal double damage to enemies of the same colour, but also take double damage. Additionally, you can use Trichroma Energy to summon a dude who will deal damage to all enemies in the area. This is a cool idea, however, since the summon was competing for energy against the ability to heal myself, I often overlooked it. For my playstyle at least, it didn't really feel natural to use and I felt like I had to force myself to use it. Perhaps this wouldn't fit the 80s style, however, I wish this system was replaced with something reminiscent of Hollow Knight's charm system. Being able to edit Narita Boy's code to alter how combat works, or what he could do, in my opinion, would have made combat feel less one dimensional and a bit more interesting. Onto the exploration aspect of the game. On one hand, the world is absolutely stunning to look at. Naturally, this means exploring. Simply to see the next screen is a delight in itself. But this is the gameplay section, so I'll save that for its own section. The actual gameplay part, looks aside, is nothing special. The joy of exploring games like this is being able to explore at your own pace in a direction of your choosing. Seeing an obstacle you can't overcome, then coming back to it later with new abilities. Sadly for Narita Boy, this isn't an option as the game locks you into a very linear progression and even locks you out of areas once they're complete, which as a side note is terrible if you've missed a collectible. Now I know not every game has to be non-linear, 
but so much could have been gained if this approach was taken. Where's the fun of exploring if you can only go in one direction? Furthermore, other than the cool NPCs, there really isn't that much to find or discover. All abilities are impossible to miss, and other than the five collectibles in the game, there really isn't anywhere to go off the beaten path or rewards to find. This is another reason I wish combat was a bit deeper and had some kind of better character progression. Then we'd have something exciting to find and more of an excuse to stay in this beautiful world longer. Overall, gameplay gets a 12 out of 20. The visuals for Narita Boy are nothing less than a work of art. I could take a screenshot of just about any part of the game and happily hang it on a wall. Just look at some of these stunning scenes. The colour palette is less varied than most games, however every square inch of the game is so detailed and fun to look at that you won't even notice, and it does change often enough that you won't get sick of it. For example, one zone you'll be exploring the desert simulation with vast open sands, where almost everything will be a shade of yellow. This area has servo horses being ridden in the background and almost feels like you're in a western. But then in another area, the eternal rains of the blue house will contain a completely different atmosphere with an almost entirely blue palette, a more sombre mood with lightning strikes in the background and a constant downpour of rain. This is not to say that every area is dominated by a single colour, much of the game uses a balance of all three colours that make up the trichroma, yellow, red and blue, which is a heavy visual theme you'll notice early on. The choice to make the game look as if it's running on an old computer monitor really brings out the retro vibe, and this in combination with the high quality pixel art creates a truly unique style that you won't find in any other game. Another thing worth mentioning is the animation. These are probably the best I've seen in a pixel game hands down. I know I didn't rate the combat too highly, but honestly, killing an enemy was hugely satisfying purely due to how good the attack and death animations were. Whether I'm slicing stallions in two with my techno sword or ripping through a whole army of them with my beam attack, everything just looked like perfection and made me feel like an absolute badass as a result. Studio Cobra has hit a home run with the visuals and style for this game, an easy 20 out of 20. The audio design for Narita Boy sounds absolutely great and nails the theme. Sword swings sound satisfying. Sound effects for your skills make them feel powerful. And the techno synth language the programs of the world speak feels perfect. Silvinsky does the soundtrack for the game, and what a job he's done. The last time I enjoyed the music of a game this much was Hyper Light Drifter, a game I treat with reverence. And I don't think there's a track from the game that I didn't enjoy. Maybe it's my memory of the 2010 Tron movie, but something about the synthwave just hits perfectly with the game's theme. The music masterfully sets the tone from tranquil moments like these, to intense moments like these. a great deal of effort has gone into making the tracks for this game. If I had to nitpick, I do have to say I get a bit deafened every time I open the game and it screams at me, but this is just a minor issue and I've learned to turn my speakers down when I start it now. You may not fall in love with every song instantly, but over the course of the game they'll grow on you and you'll catch yourself humming them outside of the game. It's not often I go out of my way to listen to a game's music after I've finished it, but I can tell you I've contributed quite a few views to the ending theme Save the World by now. Saving the world. Night the boy. And I've even caught my partner who hasn't played the game humming it around the house. The synth sensei would be proud on this one, a 19 out of 20 for audio and music. Overall, Narita Boy successfully combines a great story, a rich, interesting world, with some of the best visuals and music I've seen in a long time. The game felt like it knew exactly what it wanted to be and focused in on that theme with laser accuracy. It does a great job of feeling retro 80s while also feeling completely unique. The combat and exploration aspects of the game could be improved upon, but the other aspects of the game are such a delight to experience, it's easily forgiven. Overall, Narita Boy scores an 18 out of 20 for X Factor. Combining all of these scores and we reach a total score of 88 out of 100. An impressive score especially considering this is the first game that the studio has made. I'll definitely be following these developers closely and look forward to the next game in the series. I hope you've enjoyed my review of Narita Boy. If you did, please consider subscribing and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.